Marvelous Designer 7.5 added a brand new feature that basically allows us to smooth our avatar. So here by scene, if you go to avatar and you find whatever avatar you've imported, whether it's a custom avatar, you can see I'm using a Genesis 3 female. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then here at the bottom, you can see that there's an option called smooth avatar. So I'm actually going to turn that off. And to see this better, I'm going to select the wireframe mesh. And now if I go back here and I turn this on, what this is basically doing is it's subdividing our mesh. So where this comes in handy and something I noticed in the past, if you have like a, a low poly character, sometimes if even if the uh, particle distance on your garment was pretty low, which means that it would be more dense, you would see like these low poly artifacts, you'd actually see the low poly quads visible on the garment itself. So being able to basically subdivide our avatar now gets rid of that issue because it's making the avatar a lot more smooth which means our garments are going to be smooth and those low poly uh, artifacts will no longer be visible on our avatar and if you increase the division level it basically subdivides our mesh uh, further all right so another awesome addition that they added if i go to simulation click on this arrow they've now added a dedicated uv editor so if we go into the uv editor you'll see over here one of these cubes or these blocks that you see over here is going to be a UV tile. So this is really cool and you can see by default it brings in the exact same pattern that I see in the simulation window. Uh, but it, whatever I do in the UV editor will not affect what happens in the simulation. So what, I'm, what I can do over here automatically right now is I can right click and say fit UV to unified. So it's going to fit my UV within that UV tile and then I can go ahead and directly edit my UVs within Marvelous Designer. So the larger these patterns are, the more space they take up in a UV tile, the higher the texel density and the better quality those materials are going to look. And obviously that is like explaining UVs very, very quickly, um, very basic way of explaining it. And like stuff that maybe is not that important, doesn't need to take up too much space which within the UV tile. But whatever I want, Wherever I want my materials to look crisp, I can go ahead and edit my UVs. Now, obviously, this isn't a tutorial on UV editing uh, because there's a lot, lot more involved with UVs. And this is a very, very basic UV editor. Uh, there's way better programs out there like Unfold 3D. But if you just want to edit your UVs quickly within Marvelous Designer, you can now do that. So if I go back to Fit Unified to UV, I'm just going to try and rescale that and fit it a little bit better within that UV tile. You can see I can actually set the UVs from the pattern alignment again. We'll undo that and we can show the wire of our UV as well. Right. So now whenever I export this garment out of here, this is going to be my final UV. Okay. So another thing you can do with the UV editor, uh, if you click on this icon, you can actually take a snapshot of that particular UV tile. So you can see over here, you can choose the pixel size, that's 20, uh, 2048 by 2048. And I'm going to select the selected tile and it will actually save a snapshot for you. So if I go ahead, open this, there we go. There's the wireframe and there's a snapshot of my UVs. Now also keep in mind guys that if you want to, you can also use multiple UV tiles. Right. I've seen this workflow done before uh, as well, where you can uh, basically allocate and put these different pieces in their own UV tile and then use multiple UV tiles in whatever program you're using. So you can see over here, I can allocate one entire UV tile just for this part of the dress. And it also helps with texel density because now I can allocate more space for that dress. And then when I save this out, you can see it's saved in four tiles. So if I was using a program like Unfold 3D, this is Unfold 3D by the way, in Unfold 3D, you'll go to multi-tile and I can choose how many tiles are allocated. And then I just turned on this checker pattern, this checkerboard. And you can see that the pattern is actually, these checker patterns are quite small, which means the textile density is quite high, which means that any materials applied on here are going to be high quality. Okay. So there's a new feature added in the 2D pattern window called slash and spread. I'll be using it on this cube. So if you go ahead and select this, this basically works by selecting two different points. Okay, so if, if I select this point and this point over here, you'll see that these these two blue lines that are highlighted on the cube. So one way to look at this, it's basically going to take this pattern over here. So think of this triangle pattern and it's going to basically slash that and then spread it. So let me select this bottom uh, part over here. If I select this, right, 
uh, you can see over here that there's a purple dotted line that's going to determine our angle of spread and if I wanted to spread this at a very specific angle while this procedure is happening if I right click you'll see it brings up the spread window now here by angle I can type in exactly 90 degrees okay and click on OK so you can see it's taking this part of the pattern again like I said one way to look at it is taking this triangle and it slashes it and then it spreads it at that predetermined angle so it can really come in handy if you're looking for a very specific angle that you want to spread a part of your pattern okay so let me undo that now this also works for internal lines so if I draw an internal line over here click on enter go back to slash and spread now you'll see that if I hover over the internal line there's a blue arrow pointing to the left and if I move it over here there's arrow pointing on the right so if I select the arrow pointing to the left it's going to create my angle of spread going to the right and vice versa so if I select the arrow pointing to the right it will create my angle of spread going to the left so I'm going to select the left select this part of the pattern over here and you can see there we go that purple dotted line pops up to determine my angle of spread and I'll left click again to complete the procedure and it's basically taking that pattern slashing it and spreading it so that's the basics of the slash and spread and you guys can see where this can be utilized in your workflow okay so the last key feature is now the fact that we can actually transform obj trim so i'm going to go to file import obj so let's say maybe you created a button in another program uh, okay you can see over here import obj we want to make sure load as trim is selected i'm going to keep everything else default click on ok i just created some random shape quickly in zbrush but maybe you created some buttons you can import those into marvelous designer right before you could just move it around with the gizmo but now there's a new icon added over here that allows us to actually transform this so I can scale it uniformly or non uniformly as well so just by including this additional functionality I think is a great addition uh, to the program so I can actually let's say I want to move this over here by the garment and now there's another icon over there Okay, I'll just move this. There's another icon over here which is glue. So if I select that, you'll see there's like a blue dotted line and it's basically going flush with the overall form of the garment and the avatar. If I click to select that there, it basically glued this piece of geometry onto the garment. So if I click on simulate, okay, let that synchronize, click on simulate, and if I start moving this part of the garment, you'll see that it's actually glued onto that part of the garment now so that can also come in handy all right okay and one more thing I forgot to mention if you actually select your OBJ trim remember this will only pop up if the simulation is not activated you're on the right you're by scale you can put in very specific uh, specific values if that's what you want to do so maybe I want this to be 128 as well <laughs> then you guys can do that so you've got your local scale coordinates here for the X Y and Z Okay guys, so that's going to bring us to the end of the key features, uh, but check the link below. Definitely go and read these features in detail and see the other features that were added. These are more smaller features that were added to the program, but they're also quite important. So go ahead, have a look at them, but I just wanted to cover the key features for this tutorial. All right guys, so anyway, thank you for watching my videos and tutorials. Stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials and goodbye.